بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, thank you mr chairman uh, dr عبد الله and uh, co chairman dr احمد and thanks to شواق uh, i don't have such beautiful slides like what you have have color expressive uh, and it's you see as a new standard uh, of care so this this is my uh, disclosures uh, to start with, i think i agree with you way to go uh, every single patient of hcc should be discussed in a multidisciplinary uh, tumor board with all services on board we heard uh, from dr kanan and ashwag that different factors uh, including etiology with the growth uh, Fahad, uh, and interest to guide uh, treatment plans. Ahmed. Yes, uh, we have a problem with the voice. It's uh, actually, it's interrupting. Uh, can we fix that from uh, your side? Okay. Yes, they will fix it. Thank you. Okay, so we'll try now, uh, Dr. Ahmed. Yeah. I'll start the video, right? Yeah, it's good now. Yeah, okay. So uh, I will start with the summary of my presentation. I think it's uh, almost a game over for, uh, in general. It's now immune therapy is, is the new standard of care. Uh, of course, with patient selection, case by case, but as immune therapy, uh, we think big, and we will take uh, first line is done. We so we think for other things like earlier disease and adjuvant and new adjuvant and combination uh, with uh, local regional uh, treatments. And at the end, I have few thoughts I will share uh, with you. Uh, okay. Okay, so systemic therapy for advanced HCC, you saw this before, so we all were happy in 2007 with Sorafenib. In the last few years, we have this flow of uh, active agents in HCC. Uh, if you tell me that 10 years ago, I wouldn't really believe it. I mean, HCC was a desperate disease. So I think this is the golden age of HCC. And then it's the immune therapy. We started using immune therapy in 2017 with this uh, very important phase two study, Checkmate 042, which showed that nivolumab immune therapy have a, a good activity in HCC and inducing a decent response rate in these different etiologies. And that led to the design of the phase three study for nivolumab 459 Checkmate, uh, a primary endpoint of our survival, uh, so uh, nivolumab challenging now sorafenib in a superiority uh, design study. Unfortunately, that uh, did not meet the uh, pre-specified overall survival significance. Yet none of us as HCC uh, oncologists believe that this is the end of nivolumab. We think there's still some role for nivolumab in those patients who are not the best for sorafenib. Maybe they're not the best for atezubib as well. And why? Because it's tolerable at the agents, uh, uh, grade three uh, treatment related adverse event were 22% compared to 49% for sorafenib. And then the game changer was the I am Brave uh, 150. So atezolizumab, bifizumab versus sorafenib in the first line setting and overall survival is the primary endpoint. Uh, very nicely balanced uh, study. And this is the updated overall uh, survival from the uh, last update in the ASCO GI this year. So 19 months compared to 13 months. That's clear, Ashwag, nicely separated curves with the in the context of this uh, clinical study, which we might uh, discuss later. Also, improved progression-free uh, survival. The complete response in this uh, study was reported at 8% in rhesus or 12% if you take the modified HTC rhesus. The uh, disease control rate, 74% 
for the atezolizumab, uh, and the ongoing response in this study at the time of reporting the study was 56 uh, percent. So more diarrhea and head foot syndrome in uh, the uh, uh, sorafenib arm, but more uh, liver, uh, liver enzyme uh, increase in proteinuria and infusion reaction in the combination arm. Despite the sophisticated screening for bleeding and treatment of surgical varices, there was still an increase in GI uh, bleed, 7% versus 4.5% for sorafenib. Uh, and why there's, uh, we all are interested in immune therapy whenever we can, because it also improves quality of life, more tolerable. And uh, in this study, it was the time to deterioration, uh, uh, which was prolonged 11 months compared to 3.6 months. Uh, I always look for good uh, uh, smaller papers coming from uh, uh, good studies like I am brave 150 and this study from the I think last ASCO looking at uh, 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 the association between response rate and uh, survival so uh, 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 it, it's really clear uh, in the study so if you have a patient started on a tizubab, so uh, and having response that should detect uh, uh, survival do you see uh, uh, clear in the Zoom, the slides? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so. Very clear. Excellent. So, uh, as Dr. Schwag said earlier, uh, the immune um, therapy combination is not for, a, of course, not for organ transplant uh, patients uh, because these patients are likely to develop acute graft rejection. Also, if they have significant autoimmune disease or uh, some immune mediated processes like pneumonitis or hepatitis. Uh, when it comes to bevacizumab, we are all familiar with uh, all years of practice with bevacizumab. Uh, we don't uh, uh, prefer to use bevacizumab when there's the concern of GI perforations, recent surgeries, uh, healing wounds, uh, bleeding, uh, tendency, fistulation, uh, or uncontrolled hypertension. So, uh, I so not yet uh, complete with immune therapy and look at these very important uh, studies with immune therapy uh, combination. Uh, I agree with you, olimvatinib and prozumab is, is something to follow. I think it's very important, but also uh, the immune therapy combination, dorbalumab, trimulumab, and nivolumab, ipilumab, uh, uh, as well as atezolizumab, cabozantinib. So these studies will be reported uh, coming uh, later this year in Cape. So the story is not yet uh, finished. I'm so happy to see, you see now, uh, we are doing all of these combinations with different classes, uh, but you can see that in each combination, at least one of them is uh, immune uh, therapy. So when it comes to second line, uh, we have the, the, uh, the phase three solid evidence is for TKIs. So we don't have a phase three study for immune therapy in second line. This part, that, as, I, as I told you before, we're interested because tolerability, especially in second line, sometimes the patients are frail, they cannot tolerate some TKIs. Uh, so uh, pembrozumab uh, uh, activity in phase to a study, then they have this phase three trial, uh, uh, challenging placebo, uh, and the control was placebo despite that pembrolizumab could not uh, be uh, uh, significantly superior to placebo. That was a disappointment. Uh, and then we have, as we uh, talked uh, before about NIVO, and also we have the NIVO EPI, which induced a decent uh, overall survival. In this phase two study, uh, uh, 22 uh, months, the last updates from the uh, ASCO GI this year, that at three years, 42% were alive uh, uh, because of second line NIVO EPI. That's why I'm really waiting for the report of the phase three uh, study. So as I told you before, now we're done with the first line and maybe second line. Now we uh, think bigger than this and we're taking it to earlier uh, disease and we will uh, achieve what TKIs could not achieve, right? So uh, this uh, NEVOL uh, study is very interesting, uh, phase two study. 
uh, about nivolumab adjuvantly after ablation or surgery, and they reported uh, relapse-free survival of 47% at three years. Also, there was another study of PEMPRO uh, activated in Saudi Arabia, but fortunately, uh, we couldn't because Saudi Arabia was not as a sort of tested in, uh, an adjuvant study in a phase three uh, study. New adjuvant, also several uh, phase two are ongoing. So, uh, this uh, study it is from uh, Cancers, uh, published last month, and it states the expected time of reporting of the important phase three studies. So uh, later this year, we are expecting the Dorvalumab and also cosmic study, Cabozantinib, Atizuzumab, Vatinib, Pimprozumab, and Dr. Fahad, I think we have a problem with the, the voice. We lost the voice, Dr. Fahad. Yeah, was it like all the presentation or just like a few minutes ago? No, 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 it's only just the, the last two minutes. Okay. Or maybe l l last minutes. Okay. Hello. No. No, not this one, sorry. Yes, right. Okay. It's okay. So, do you hear us well now, Abdullah? Yeah, now it's better now, Dr. Fahad. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. No. So, uh, uh, I was saying till they fix the slides uh, that. And now immune therapy uh, combinations and the future is combination, mostly a combination of uh, take AI and immune therapy or dual immune therapy will be the way to go uh, in HCC. And we will be having, we're all happy with the uh, flow of evidence that we had in the last few years, but we will have even more uh, in the uh, coming uh, years, starting from later, uh, this year. Excellent. Thank you. Please. Okay, so uh, I will come to conclusions and thoughts and only maybe two or three slides left. So Atizolizumab, Bifizumab is the reference first line uh, treatment for HCC, of course, patient selection according to the I am Brave uh, 150. But oral take eyes, I agree, sorafenib, levatinib remain an alternative option uh, for some patients. Uh, and here we talk about transplant, uncontrolled pre existing uh, autoimmune disease, uh, uh, and bleeding tendencies, and uh, uh, things that we talked about. Of course, there's still a role for take eyes. But identification of patient subgroups that respond and benefit from immune checkpoint inhibitors remain a mainstay goal of cancer research because we know not all patients uh, respond to uh, immune therapy. And the moving forward direction will be biomarkers and uh, expanding the list of immune targets, which will happen, and smarter combinations. The future directions. So I think uh, now I'm, uh, we're, uh, we have the luxury of having this revolution of this evidence uh, and systemic treatment for HCC now has gained a considerable momentum uh, uh, in the last 
few years, uh, but uh, never has its uh, outlook been as bright and diverse as today. Treatment as adjuvant and surgery and ablation uh, and combining them with the local regional treatments also as palliative first or second line is unprecedented. Uh, the uh, coming few years, we'll see a host of data from phase three clinical trials, which have high chance of bringing a profound change to the clinical management of uh, HCC. Uh, but a weakness of the current landscape of clinical trials is that virtually uh, all of these trials require ideal patients, uh, uh, normal liver function, almost normal uh, liver functions uh, with good performance status without comorbidities. So these patients uh, uh, with, with, with comorbidities, uh, child class B, uh, uh, constitute really a majority of our patients. So uh, I wish to see some uh, clinical trials taking care of this uh, important uh, population. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fahad bin Shamsa. You enlight us very nicely about the role of immunotherapy in HCC. Uh, it's my pleasure also to present Dr. Khadr Gahtani to uh, present his data about uh, the Saudi uh, guideline for hepatocellular carcinoma. So Dr. Khadr Gahtani is a consultant, gastroenterologist and hepatologist in King Faisal Special Hospital. Uh, Dr. Uh, you are welcome. And the mic for you, please. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Masaakallah al-Khair. Um, 